Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about something that's been in my mind, not even recently, I mean recently, sure, but also in general. This has been something that um, I've always had a problem with growing up, uh, and it's, it's taken me a long time to come to a conclusion and really articulate the problem and, and figure out what, what it is that's going on. Let me fix my hair here. So when I was in high school, I was definitely one of the kids the, one of those elitist musicians that thought that that does think still to a degree, um, like ninety percent of pop is too simplistic, meaning that you know we sort of run the same chord changes over and over again. Um, maybe lyrically, it's not that um, it doesn't resonate that well with me, or you know it's not deep enough. Whatever it doesn't it doesn't have a strong enough message. Uh, whatever. I mean, um, I think that's a problem a lot of people have with pop music. But the only conclusion you know I could come to, and the only way I, I could articulate it back then, was that you know it's too simple. But at the same time, I've recently realized that I really I don't like music that is overly technical just for the sake of being overly technical as well. And a lot of the stuff I'm saying right now is going to bounce back to the conversation Max and I had on his channel, Anarcho Sagas. We had a uh, talk about music, so I'll link that in the description. That was really fun, you guys should check that out too. So all that being said, I think at this point I have come to a pretty concise and well thought out conclusion. Um, and it's not quite that the music is too simplistic, that is a way to look at the issue, but the issue really goes way deeper than that. Um, and that has to do with the fact, and this is something I think a lot of songwriters forget. I mean, it's, it's, it's so obvious, and everyone, everyone knows it, but it's easy to gloss over it. And that point is that the music itself is emotional and can convey a message within itself. Um, just the notes being lined up in the right order, whatever. Uh, and I know you're thinking like, yeah, of course. But so much of the music that we listen to, that's on the radio or whatever, does have the same, you know, the four chords. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a million music video or million YouTube videos about it. There are a certain number of chords that just present themselves to us. They're very easy to work with. We don't really have to think about it. They all flow very well. Um, and granted, you can go miles and miles with those same four or five chords, whatever you're using. But That being said, there is you know there are worlds more that we're missing out on. Not necessarily chords themselves, well chords themselves too, but also chord relationships, um, rhythmic figures, melodic structure. And when I listen to a pop song, I definitely get the the feeling that the music itself was almost an afterthought. Whatever writer or team of writers came together to write these lyrics. The lyrics were the main focus, the main goal, and then the music behind it was like, all right, let's put something with this. And that's actually interesting to me because when I write music, I write the music first. Um, so I definitely come from a spot where, I mean, I, I just feel within myself that the music itself is the most important and emotional aspect. Once I've written the music, and it, it, it seems so interesting because yeah, they write the lyrics, they have the subject, the themes, whatever, and then they put music on top of it. When I write my music, I do have, I sort of, I have an ambiguous subject and theme and emotion in mind. And once I've made the music and I've sat with it for a second, I can kind of figure out from there. It really does help quite a bit. Words can put certain things in a box and throw things out. For instance, you know, there, there, there's, there are more emotions than just happy, sad, angry, melancholy, whatever. I mean, those are the sort of dominating emotions, but there's all these little things in between that we cannot properly articulate with words, or it is very hard to do so. With music, you can convey feelings so specific that there are no words for it. 
And that's a very, very important thing. And that's why I'm a big fan of movie music, because those composers have to convey certain emotions just with the music. And that's what elevates a lot of movies, that's what elevates a lot of scenes. Even if the actor, you know, maybe his face is just deadpan, whatever, nothing's really happening. If there's a certain kind of music put over that and it's effective enough, it's well written, then you know what you're supposed to feel and that puts you in the moment. That's why, that's what makes a lot of movies so engaging is the music because it connects you with what's happening. Uh, I'm not saying that the movie itself is, you know, a movie itself is not engaging already. There are plenty of great movies that have no soundtracks, but that's why movies so often use music because it is sort of another medium within itself that helps engage the audience. Um, and what is sad, though, is that, you know, when you do think of movie music, there are really two feelings, sad or epic, right? Like, you all think of The Dark Knight, or, I don't know, there's always, like, you know, the sad song, the sad piece from every movie, you know, when, when the hero is dying, or some character is dying, and then Everyone sort of jumps on that, which is fine, which is cool, but um, just, to, just to ramble off a few, the love theme from a movie called Cinema Paradiso is probably one of the most effective love themes I've ever heard in my life. And I remember I had, it was written by uh, Ennio Maricone's son, actually, and I had a CD growing up of Ennio Maricone's music, and the love theme was on it. And, you know, being 12 at the time, I would listen to all the spaghetti western music, you know, over and over again, because it was just, it was super cool to me at 12 years old. There's still great soundtracks, but yeah, especially at 12, it's like, yeah, this is great stuff. Um, and then whenever the love theme came on, I would, I would skip over it. And then it wasn't until, like, you know, after puberty, when I had experienced all that stuff, that I sort of happened upon that theme once again, and it, I clicked with it you know, immensely, and I became a huge fan of it. And it's just, it's interesting to me because that, that's, that instance, that uh, song, that piece in general, the fact that, you know, when I was young and I hadn't felt those things, I, you know, I could care less for that, for that piece, for that love theme. And then it was only when I became a teenager and I had felt those feelings that suddenly that music resonated really, really deeply within me. And that is a testament to the fact that music can truly stir up emotions within us. And lyrics can definitely help, but I feel that with most pop music these days, the lyrics and the music are almost on separate planes. It's as if the music is almost arbitrary to what's what's being said in the lyrics. I, I've heard bands or artists, whatever, um, you know, write a song about um, being in love, and maybe it's a successful love, and everything's great, and they use four chords, and then there's a song about, you know, tragedy and anguish and loneliness, whatever, and they use the same four chords. Um, so at that point... I really do feel that that is lazy songwriting. Um, and so going back to the point that I feel a lot of pop music is overly simplistic, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's not the fact necessarily that it's not technical or complicated enough. I don't care about that. But if you do know what you're doing in terms of music composition, um, you can create a more effective vehicle for your message, meaning that you can work with more sophisticated chord changes, whatever, that more precisely say what you're trying to say. And I think that's extremely important. It's called word painting, and that's actually a more recent thing in terms of music history. If you put music with a story, an idea, a picture, whatever it is, and then try to capture that within the music itself. And, you know, funny enough, that is what we do all the time nowadays when we make music. I think that is the sort of logical conclusion that music has come to. But even so, 
I think that's what we've been doing the whole time without even really realizing it. I mean, go all the way back to Bach and his Chacon. He wrote that after his wife died. And the Chacon is a tragic and beautiful piece of music. And there's, you know, there's no doubt that he was sort of spilling all these, these feelings of despair and sadness into his writing. Um, so I do think that is something we've been doing, you know, since day one with music. And there's another thing, another reason moving music, I think, is so important to me is because it is, you know, mostly, definitely, vastly, mostly instrumental. And that's important because I do think, I think true, well, specifically working off the Chacon, I do think true tragedy and, and sadness and depression is too dark for voice. There is a certain amount of of hope and optimism and ambition that comes with saying anything. Whether it be like, hey, can you grab that pen? You have a means to an end. Or saying to someone, I love you, with the you know subtext being, do you love me back? What, however deep or not deep it is, there is a goal in mind. And when you are truly off the rails, sad, have you, ever, have you ever cried really hard? You're in the middle of bawling for whatever reason, and you try to say something and it just doesn't come out? Because you're so not in control of your body that you just, you can't, you can't make it happen. Um, and so then again, you know, voice and vocalization takes a certain amount of composure. And when you are truly in anguish, you don't have that. And that's why I think instrumental music captures that way more successfully than any song. Even, you know, even, even the, the, the saddest song in the world, there's some degree of, of hope in it. That's, that's at least what I think. All right, so getting out of that, I know it was a little sad, but I think that was the best way I could... That was the best example for what I'm trying to get out here. Which is that the music itself, I don't think, should take a back seat. And it's, it's I mean, I, I love songs, I love poetry, I love lyricism. Um, that's something that I really only got into towards the end of high school when I was like 17, 18. Um, and they are, they are sort of, they can be separate art forms, but when you do put words with music, they need to work together. They cannot be separate things. And when I hear music on the radio or whatever, a lot of the time I feel that they are separate planes. Um, and that is sad to me because they really should be one thing. And that's something I try to do with my music. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's up to you guys if you think I am successful at that. But once I do have a story, a theme, an emotion in mind, the lyrics and the music really need to be one entity. So next time you listen to your favorite song or whatever, try to listen to the music itself rather than the lyrics. Because I notice one more thing is that, uh, yeah, 90% of the time, what people have to say about a song is, these are great lyrics. It's either I like that beat, which honestly doesn't really mean anything, or these are great lyrics. So try to step away from the lyrics, listen to the music itself, listen to the melodic changes, the chords, the rhythm, um, and ask yourself, does this effectively portray what is being said? A little food for thought. Take care.